if our player has the tag, the cube should turn pink, and it does. If we go ahead and remove this tag, run past again, nothing happens. And if we add the tag in again and run past, should change. And it does. Hey there, I'm your host, Lesawi. And in today's video, we will go over how to use tags in Unreal Engine. So that said, let's begin. There are two ways that I would use tags in Unreal Engine. We'll go over the first one because it's quicker, and then we'll do the second one. So to begin, we'll go to our content drawer. Let's add in a new folder. This is for examples, we'll call it lights. Inside here, we'll then quickly create a material. So we can change our light color, we'll call it M underscore light. Open this up, make this larger. And here, if we press the key four and left mouse, we'll get a constant four vector and plug this in into your emissive color. And then we'll change this to something like pinkish, make it all the way bright. Okay, apply and save. With that done then, let's right click, go into our blueprint class and create an actor called BP underscore light. In here then, on the overlaps, we're gonna check, does the player have a tag? Turn on. If the player doesn't have a tag, turn off. So to do this, we'll first add a static mesh. So this will be our light here. Let's add in a cube, this one here. And let's also remember if we compile the material we have. So this is our M underscore basic underscore wall. Perfect. Because we'll be changing the material here. We then want to, while having this selected, add a sphere or a whatever collision you want. And with this, let's make it larger, something like 300. Perfect. So if our player overlaps this radius, well, then the cube should change color if they have the tag, that is. So with that, let's go to our event graph. We can get rid of these, don't need that. And let's right click on the sphere, add event, add on component, begin overlap. So here then, from the other actor, we're going to check has tag. So actor has tag. Now the tag we want to check for, let's just call it player. And we'll get a branch. So if they do have it on true, well then we'll grab our static mesh and we'll do set material like so. So if they have the tag, the material will be set to our M underscore light material we just made. And then on, if we right click, add event on end overlap, we'll uh, simply change this back to its origin, original color material. So if we remember, it was called M underscore wall, nope, M basic wall. There we are. Okay, so just like so, if we compile and we add in our light here, Nothing should happen just yet because our player, we never added that tag. So if we play, go past, it's still white. But now if we were to go into content, third person, blueprints, we can add in our tag. So we'll go to class defaults, search for tag. And in here, actor tags, we'll add an array element and call this player. Compile and save. And we hit play. Now this should turn pink. And boom, it does. Just before we go over the second method, you might ask, but why do I want to use tags? Well, let's say you're used to working with a lot of booleans. Um, tags would clean that space up a little bit more because it's more efficient. You can have a single tag container with all of these checks. So let's get into the second option here. And let's create a, we could do this inside lights. Let's create a blueprint class and go to actor component and we'll call this BPC underscore tags. Now, the reason I'm doing this in a actor component is because we can easily add this to any of our players, actors, whatever it may be. So in the variables tab, we'll click plus and do game play tags for the name. And for the type, we'll do a game play tag container. So in the name, it's in the name there. It's a container for our gameplay tags. Now this is stored on the engine, so we could access this in any of our uh, blueprints, which is amazing. And in here then, in the default value, we have an option to add and manage gameplay tags. So for example, if we were to do something like light dot has torch, well then this will put it in the hierarchy of light. 
right? And this will be the condition. Um, am I adding one? No, I'm looking for one. So uh, let's add one then. We'll do light dot has torch like so. Then this puts it in the hierarchy of light. And you could continue doing full stops and make as many as you want. And for the comment, we'll just say has light like so. And the source will do default gameplay tags dot ini like so and add new tag. And there we are. That's our new tag. Now we could also go ahead and remove this if we didn't want it. So manage gameplay tags, we can right click and do delete tag. So just like so, we have a tag in here. So let's click on that and do light as torch. And compile and save this. What we can do then is if we go back to our light, inside here then we can go ahead and create a custom event saying check for tag. So we'll uh, get our player character. We'll cast to our third person character like so. Look this in. And then out here, we will do a get component by class. And the component we are checking for is our tags component. We don't have it yet. We haven't added it to the player. We will check for it and then do is valid just in case it's not valid. We won't get an error. And then out here, we can do gameplay tags. So this is the variable that we're getting, we just made. And we'll do has tag. And we'll get a branch like so. So in here, then we could go ahead and do print strings. Oh, if it has it true, say hello. If it doesn't say bye, let's say we actually do that. Print string will get two of these. So we'll say hello and we'll say bye like this. And let's check for our light has torch tag like this. Cool. So if we walk past right now, nothing will happen because we don't have our tag, right? We just changed the color because of our first tag. So uh, let's go back in here. And in our third person character, we'll add in some inputs. We could also add these inputs in our component since the player will have this component. So also not a bad idea. Let's just do it in the player. So let's do a keyboard one of it. So keyboard one, like so. And whenever this is pressed, I just want to check um, that the player has the tag. So we'll first of all need to add in our component to our player. So BPC underscore tags. We'll grab this and do gameplay tags, get gameplay tags. And out here we'll do again has tag. So if we do contain our light as torch tag, we can then do a print string. Directly plug that in there, should convert it for you. And this will let you know, hey, we have a tag or hey, we don't have this tag. So that's amazing there. Now, another thing I want to do is whenever we can actually just copy this, control C, control V and change this if we compile to two. And let's do one again or three. We can also add and remove tags. So with that said, we can go ahead, copy this and do remove gameplay tag. And just like this, we can also do add gameplay tag. So again, plug it in there. This will go in our tag container again inside our tag container. OK, so whenever we press two, we remove it. Whenever we press three, we add it. So what are we adding? Well, I want to add a torch. And I want to remove has torch. And then simply from here, we'll just do a print string, which I can steal here and say, OK, well, tag has been removed. Exclamation point. And tag added. Oops. There we are. OK, so let's compile and save this. And now because we um, have this component, we implement it. We should get some print strings on the top left here. So let's hit play walk past and we get nothing. Let's see why that is quickly uh, lights. Ah, we need to check for this. We need to add this to our overlap. We made this event, but never added it. So at the very end here, we'll grab our check for tag event. And now it will let us know, hey, we have it or we don't. So play and says hello because we have it. So let's say we want to press two tag removed. We walk past. 
says bye because we don't have it. And we if we add it and again, tag added says hello. So let's do this with changing the light now. So instead of having our where's our light? This is our light. That's our event here. Instead of doing print strings, let's take our materials. Control C, Control V. On true, we'll, we'll change it to our pink. And on false, look this in there, like so. We'll just make it our default white basic wall. And we can get rid of this. Don't need that here. We can leave this like so. But on overlap, we will check for this event here. So compile and save. We can always go ahead and press one to see, do we have the tag? True. That means we have it. And if we go here, boom, light turns on. And if we press two, tag removed, then press one to check. False, because we don't have it. And if we walk past, nothing happens. So with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like. And as always, happy developing.